Thanks for taking the time to see how an Excel Super self-managed super fund works and how it can revolutionise the way that all Australians save for their retirement. The interesting thing is that Australia has the third largest private pension system in the world. Not bad for a country of only 21.5 million people. The problem is that 98% of those people who participate in that pension system are unhappy and would rather go it alone than continue to rely on superannuation fund managers for their retirement. I think that's a really sad statistic. Excel Super was created because we believe that self-managed super can revolutionise the way you save for your retirement and help you feel good about the superannuation system again. On this video, I'm going to use my own Excel Super self-managed super fund as an example of how my wife, Georgina and I, were able to take control of our own super and set it on a path that we know will secure our retirement. The first thing to remember is that super is not an investment. It's just a blank tax structure that receives concessional tax treatment because it can't be accessed until you retire. It has a tax rate of 15% while you're still in accumulation phase or the superannuation savings mode. But that tax rate drops to 0% when you get to retirement and commence a pension. This is called pension phase. So just remember these rates for now because I'll highlight why they're so important later on. Every super fund has a trustee who's responsible for making all the decisions about how the funds invest and administered. And members like you and I put our faith in these trustees to care for our money and to invest it wisely and in our best interests. But much of the problem with retail and industry funds is that the trustees' interests are rarely aligned with ours. The reason for this is that they might have shareholders or parent companies who demand profit, sometimes at our expense, and influence the trustees to offer in-house investments that might not be the best choice for us. While trustees have this conflict of interest, I don't think that this is the best way to manage the money that they hold in trust for you and I. And this is the reason that taking control of your super is the catch cry of the self-managed super industry. So you make the decisions about how to run your fund. Let me give you an example. My superannuation was previously with Colonial First State and they're owned by the Commonwealth Bank Group. Within my fund, I wanted to move from shares to term deposits, but found that the only option I was given were Commonwealth Bank term deposits with an interest rate that was nearly three quarters of a percent below what I could get elsewhere. I complained about it, but was told I had no choice because this was the trustee's decision and they would only be offering Commonwealth Bank term deposits. The trustees clearly have a vested interest here. I've also learned after working in this industry for 23 years that fund managers most profitable activity is managing share based investments. So naturally they want you to hang in there in their share based investments even if your statement is showing a negative return year after year. So the next thing that Georgina and I did was to take control of our super and establish a self managed super fund. We called it the Harris Super Fund. We set up and became the directors of a corporate trustee called George Rama Proprietary Limited, which replaces Colonial First State as the decision maker on how our super would be invested and controlled. We could have chosen to be individual trustees, which would have saved $900 in setup costs, but decided that because we wanted to invest in property, that this would have been a false economy and went straight for a corporate trustee structure for added legal protection. We then opened a Macquarie Cash Management account as the cash hub of our self-managed super fund. And we rolled over all the money from our previous super into this cash management account. Between the two of us, we had around 150,000 now sitting in our Macquarie Cash Management account that we controlled and we could decide how to invest. The next thing we did was instruct our employers to make our employer super contributions to our new self-managed super fund. Now my income is 150,000 a year, so my employer was paying 9% or $13,500 into super for me each year. Georgina was earning $73,000, 
So this meant that her employer was contributing $6,570 each year. So we now had a total of $20,070 going into the fund annually in contributions from our employer. Now this bit is optional, but both Georgina and I could elect to make additional salary sacrifice contributions and top up our employer contributions to a total of $25,000 per annum each. These are called concessional contributions. Employer, self-employed personal and salary sacrifice contributions go into super pre-tax, so we pay no personal tax on these. My employer already pays $13,500, so that means I can salary sacrifice a further $11,500 into super and not pay tax on it. And George can pay an additional $18,430 as pre-tax contributions to super. Remember, concessional contributions are subject to 15% contributions tax in the fund. Now if we strike it rich, we can each contribute another $150,000 into super each from our own money, which is after tax. These are called non-concessional contributions, as they haven't received a tax concession. We can even bring forward three years worth of non-concessional contributions and contribute $450,000 each in a single year if we need to. Perhaps not this year, but maybe one day. Now I know that this might seem like we're getting carried away making hundreds of thousands of dollars of super contributions, but the great thing about super is that you can save up to $25,000 each year which is essentially tax deductible. Contributions to super can be a bit complex, so if you need to know more, we've included a smart super strategies file that contains all the technical detail about contribution caps in addition to this video. If you can't locate it, just phone us and we'll email it to you. Now Georgina and I, we were keen to get started and implement our investment strategy and in our case, we wanted to keep some funds in our cash management account to buy some shares and term deposits. But we also wanted to buy an investment property. So Georgina did some research and found a nice little investment unit for $345,000 near the city with good growth potential and a yield of 4.97% rent. We put in an offer and it was accepted. Now the bank agreed to lend us 80% of the value of the property, so we needed to come up with a deposit and the fees. We needed $72,500 for the deposit, plus $19,250 in bank fees, stamp duty and legal fees to complete the purchase. And we paid these amounts from our Macquarie cash management account, leaving $78,320 for the shares and turn deposits we also wanted to buy. We borrowed $272,500 from the bank using a special type of loan that's required in self-managed super called a Limited Recourse Borrowing Arrangement or LRBA. An LRBA is just an ordinary home mortgage but with the bank's security limited to the property only, nothing else. After a quick paint and a few new light fittings, we found some tenants who rented the property at $330 per week giving us the 4.97% rental yield that we were expecting. Our mortgage payments were $1,856 per month over a 25 year term, paying principal and interest. Now these mortgage repayments were easily covered from the income already going into the fund from two sources. The rent that the tenants were paying, plus the 9% contributions our employer was already making to super. In effect, we were paying our mortgage with tax deductible money. I got pretty excited about that. I was also excited about the fact that this didn't affect our personal cash flow one bit because the property was being paid for by our existing employer contributions plus the rent. Also, we realised that when we wanted to sell the property, we'd pay a substantially reduced amount of capital gains tax because the capital gains tax rate in super for properties that are held for longer than 12 months is substantially less than our personal marginal tax rate. Remember, 
superannuation funds are taxed at a 15% tax rate and that the capital gains tax we pay in super is only two thirds of that which equals 10% tax on the capital gain. We also realised that if we waited until retirement to sell there was no capital gains tax at all because the tax rate of a super fund in pension phase at retirement is nil. Wow, imagine that, no capital gains tax on property at retirement. The last thing we needed to consider were the fees. Georgina and I understood very clearly that there's quite a lot of work in managing our own super. In fact, there are six components that the superannuation industry supervision legislation, also known as the CIS Act, requires trustees to address in the management of the fund each year, which, as a trustee, you're obliged to do. And those six components are records and bookkeeping, the preparation and lodgement of the fund's tax returns, the annual audit, technical and strategic advice to ensure that you're complying with the law, investment management, and insurance management. Initially, when we went to set up our fund, our accountant told us that he could do the preparation and lodgement of the tax returns for us for around $2,500 per year, and that he'd arrange for the independent auditor to audit the fund for about $500 per year, but that we would need to do all the work to manage the other four components ourselves, or find a financial advisor to do that for us. He explained that this was what's known as DIY Super. Now Excel Super do offer a DIY Super package called Excel Super Lite, which costs $167 per month or $2,000 per year plus GST. But it's important to remember that with a DIY Super fund such as Excel Super Lite, Excel Super just do the preparation and lodgement of the fund's tax returns while you do all the work to manage the other five components yourself. Excel Super Lite is not available for those wanting to establish a limited recourse borrowing arrangement because of the complexity involved in these structures. Instead, our clients usually choose the Excel Super self-managed super fund product, which is $417 per month and is a fixed flat fee that includes all six components included in the price. So there are no hourly rates, no asset based fees, no commission, just a fixed flat fee. So that's how an Excel self-managed super fund works. If you'd like to read some more about the technical aspects to the borrowing rules in self-managed super fund, we've included the smart file titled Borrowing Rules for Self-Managed Super Funds with this video. If you have trouble locating it, just phone us and we'll email you a copy. Also, we've included a copy of our product information brochure so that you can read about Excel Super in black and white with a copy of the Excel Super Self-Managed Super application form included in the back. But to make things easy, just ring us and we'll do the rest but only when you're ready.